Disclaimer, the contents of this podcast reflect the beliefs of the participants, some of which are admittedly weird. There's a lot of self-indulgent, context-free humor too, so you've been warned three times now. This is the Brain Software Podcast, episode 178, coming to you from the hypnotic world epicenter, Toronto, Canada. I'm Chris Thompson, and in this episode, Mike Mandel and I will be talking about stress, all about stress, what you can do about it, so stay Tuned. Give us the intro song. Riders on the storm. Into this world we're born. Into this world we're thrown. Hey everybody, oh. it's really cool to be here with you. I'm filling in for Dr. Dave Ambrose, who's on vacation with Larry Gomez and my friend Spancaluccio. So I get to do the introduction for this really big show. Whoa there, slow down and stop waving your arms, son. This isn't a grain elevator, you know. Yeah, I know, Dad. I'm just really happy about being the show's announcer today. Of course you're happy about it, but the rest of us, not so much. Don't get too big for your britches, son. That can lead to a glands compression compression injury, or worse. Yeah, I guess so, Dad. I just thought... Don't think that's your problem. Remember, you're still just Danny. Yeah, I know, Dad. But whatever happened to that old tranquility we used to know and love? Ah, ha, 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 These are days of victory. So let's welcome to the inner ring of the hypnotic Large Hadron Collider, the official Dealey Plaza tour director, a man who could be a professional soccer player, if only he had the talent and the interest, and the Raymond Reddington of the hypnotic blacklist, Mike Mandel. Yes, Chris, I risked my neck again. I risked it, but we're here. Oh. We're ready to go, man. This is freaking awesome. All right, so okay. we are ready to rock in the rockery, and yep. we're going to do our rock thing in the today. Rear. So, Reminder, this is all about stress relief. And you can see we're already relieved of all of our stress. We're going to have a good time here. We're going to teach you some techniques and some ways to think and deal with stress more effectively. We're going to do the think tank words first. But first, we're going to say we're gonna go on. we are not dispensing medical advice. This of is course. for education only. And always see your psychiatrist. <laughs> so first think tank word all generated right. by the Savo Book and Check original think tank tank. Yes. Armor. armor. Do you have enough coffee today? No, I'm, yeah. I'm on the third right. one here. The second one is Colosseum. All armor, Colosseum. And the and third one is Doe, D-O-U-G-H. Oh, wow. So what do you think when you think armor? Well, armor, protection, but also something that can still be pierced. So no like matter how. No matter. <laughs> We're going to start the show over. It's got refund written all over. Okay, armor. So, yeah, protection of some It it offers you protection, but let's Mm -hmm. also remember that no protection is perfect, right? Correct, Chris. Well, remember that, kids. (laughs) Now, look, here's the thing. You're still going with that. I've been staring at the monitor since we started. I've switched to looking at the camera, but I admit it, so it's okay. okay. It's okay. So, armor, I'm thinking we're talking about stress. We're going to give you ways to armor yourself yes. against the stresses of the world, which leads to the second one, Colosseum. Colosseum. Oh, man. You remember that movie, The no. Colosseum? No, I don't. Or, I remember Gladiator. Sorry, Gladiator. That's not the name of the movie. The Gladiator. Yeah, Gladiator. Not the Gladiator. With Russell, Gladiator with Russell Crowe. That's like saying that the Foo place. Fighters. I've actually. <laughs> the Nine Inch Nails. I know the YouTube and the Google and the <laughs> and Facebook. The Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, oh. and the itchy ear. So, Colosseum, what are you getting out of that? <sighs> You're in a good headspace today. Aren't oh yeah, you? for sure. I don't sure. know why you're in such a good mood. It's my weather. It's, it's Friday, man. We're doing oh, a podcast. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, we're okay. at work right now. Right now, um, Colosseum. Yeah, I just <sighs> see the actual Colosseum from Rome, Italy. That's what I see. Okay, but how's that tie-in? Colosseum is where something is played where out. Where people go for entertainment. Well, where they also got yeah. rip, ripped apart by lions. Yeah, Freaking which was apparently entertainment back then. Yeah, I know. And there was always the Christians, so you know, it kind of stresses me a bit. But, okay, so a Colosseum, let's look at it in terms of maybe a Colosseum where you could have something like the Olympic Games. Yes, absolutely. It doesn't have to be something involving animals and gladiators. Yeah, and a... Olympic Games, something where you would need to perform at your best, and you certainly wouldn't want to be in a stressed out situation. Correct. There we go. And you wouldn't want to be tied up and held in the stress position to be waterboarding. That's right. So let's right. move on to Doe. Okay, D-O-U-G-H. Doe. Well, 
Uh, dough. I think about I think about talking. cookie dough or pizza dough, and I think about it rising. So I, I think, think of money, man. Think yeah, of dough. you can think of dough. Give That's me the funny. Dough, I man. you should have made the joke about me. I, you know, I know I didn't though. Um, you need dough to I'm afford a about, lot of Tesla. I'm thinking about the yeast that causes a dough to rise. An infection. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about <laughs> we've got, we've yeast. Got. Chris, your yeast infections. Now listen. The bottom line is, yeah, it it rises. You have put leaven in something. You mm -hmm. put yeast in. It will rise and expand. There are many things that expand that we won't be discussing. Discussing, but um, one in particular. But the bottom line here is, <laughs> if you want to that. armor yourself against stress. You want to get in the coliseum and you want to rise and you up. want to rise up to the occasion there because we, we freaking can, that's and so right. can you because these are days, days of victory. Of victory. Yes, All right, so that is that's probably the quickest think tank edition we've done in I know. a while. Well, you said beforehand we have to trim down the I, think tank words. I, I think it's important to spend more time on the content, but think still get through it because the, the think tank part is still fun. <laughs> All right. It's amusing, especially when I don't know the words, and I think it's useful. We'll see how these come back in. Uh, no, I know, before we, All I don't right. want to stress you by saying uh -oh, this, but uh -oh. because I'm online right now, uh oh, the temptation to play someone somewhere in the world backgammon during this entire podcast and maintain my skill level and still do the podcast is overwhelming. Yeah. So don't do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so what is stress? Let's get a definition. All right. Let's for stress. talk about and it. I gave one in our clubhouse meeting the other day and you liked it. I said, yeah. My definition of stress is that which causes us to adapt. Yes. That's a You want to clarify that science? Yeah. Speak? Well, if you, I mean, if you, uh, Let's say you're growing a new breed of plant and the climate is different. Yeah. You're going to have to cause that plant variety to adapt to a colder climate or die, right? If you stress your muscles in the gym, they tend to grow hypertrophy, right? right? Which, of course, is eustress, E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S. Mm -hmm. Eustress, meaning it's a stress that causes us to adapt in a beneficial way. Absolutely. So every workout causes us to do that. Yes. And if you think about... In science, you have homeostasis, everything's staying the same, everything in balance. Yeah. When you call, when you introduce any stress into a system, and we are. it will change. It yeah. will adapt. It will find a new equilibrium. Equilibrium. Yeah. Equilibrium. <laughs> that came out weird. Have you had a stroke? <laughs> I wish I had more coffee. <laughs> now, listen. Um, so that's everybody experiences stress. We agree on that. Some is, some is actually adaptive, so it's good. Yeah. It's when, it's when available resources are insufficient for the demands upon you that it becomes um, bad. <laughs> I couldn't think I, of a clever I, word. <laughs> dursative. A dursative. There we go. Dursative. It's in our hypnotic right. library or uh, glossary. There we go. Okay. So there's your definition of stress. Now, yes. not, next point says, oh, not all stress is bad. Right. right? And not stress. Everyone experiences it. Not all stress is bad. You stress like working out or whatever. But there's, a, there's still a spectrum, right? Because... While going to the gym and doing a set of push-ups or pull-ups or whatever would be considered good stress. Yes, I'm making myself right. healthy. But if I was doing 100 sets a day of push-ups, I think that would be a little bit excessive and perhaps no longer oh, you think? use stress, right? Yeah, I don't, by the way. <laughs> I'm glad to hear yeah, that. Clearly, you can see I'm, Cause if you, yeah, if you did, I'm not a bodybuilder. No, but no, you're very ridiculous. I like to fit. stay fit, but, um, but yeah, I'm not a huge guy or anything You're what, like 56 that. now? Yeah, you bast. <laughs> 46 <laughs> right now. 46. Now listen, um, so we can experience stress because of certain emotional needs if they're not mm -hmm. being met. So let's look at this aspect of it because we are all, as of the recording of this brilliant podcast, going through um, home incarceration, especially in Ontario because of the whole COVID. Home incarceration. Oh, That's a perfect that? phrase. But, you know, we're, we're locked down. And there are Ontario rules. And Ontario is particularly bad. There are rules and regulations and more rules and so on. And this is causing a lot of stress on a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. I have never seen my family go through more stress, other families, friends, et cetera. Uh, yeah, very stressful time. It Do you has find been. it stressing me? I'd, I'd say that it is, yeah. Really? Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it is, yeah. We, I, we I was wondering if it was apparent. Actually, this reminds me of a conversation we had with a friend of ours last night. A uh, friend in Australia, we were talking about how often do people get sad and like happy guys like us. Do things affect us? Does stress get us down? Absolutely, it can get us down. And we may choose to wallow in it for a little while and then say, you know what? Enough is enough. Let's get back to having fun. 
Now, when you speak about wallowing, it takes me back to a wonderful cup of cappuccino I had in Ankara, Turkey in 1982. Mm. Scary thing was channeling Red and Reddington. <laughs> That's really good. Thanks. Okay, now look. So we have a need for security. Everybody has a need for security. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a need to feel safe. And with COVID, a lot of people are really freaking scared right now. A lot of people don't feel a sense of security, right? I would, I would say that's accurate, yeah. And when that happens, what is the effect on us? Um, well, we <laughs> we feel like we don't have autonomy, perhaps. We feel like we don't know what's going to happen. There's a, a degree of uncertainty. And we all need a certain level of uncertainty in our lives because lives are freaking boring if everything is certain all the time. You would literally be so freaking bored. But you don't want <laughs> the opposite end of the spectrum where everything is uncertain all the time. Well, yeah. Your income, your kid's education. Yeah, root um, canals. Your ability to go out and experience freedom. Right. Eating at a, something as simple as eating at a restaurant. I'm not going to complain too hard about you that. You say eating a restaurant? Eating at a restaurant. Okay. I'm not going to personally complain too hard about that. But if I put myself in second position and imagine I'm that restaurant Other, owner, yes. how am I putting food on the table? I know. For, literally for my kids yeah. or whatever, right? So uh, tons of stress for a lot a of A lot people. of stress, a lot of security mm. being undermined, people's jobs going and so on. So people are under stress from that. Uh, you mentioned autonomy and I put volition here mm -hmm. as well. So volition meaning your ability to act in an autonomous fashion. Yes. Um, and, and that sentence should prove to any of our naysayers right away that there is a degree of brilliance behind everything we do. So um, volition, <laughs> yeah, if we feel like our volition is being taken away, then that's a very bad feeling, isn't it? Because yes, that is not you stress. No, that is, that, that is you stress. Yes, you stress. <laughs> you. Yeah, you it's go. about you. <laughs> this whole podcast is about you. So if we, if we have no emotional connection with other people, now, do you find that that is undermined right now? I certainly do. Emotional connection yeah. with other people? Yeah, absolutely. There's only so much emotional connection that I can get from a Zoom meeting, let's say. Right, and right? it's a modicum. It's not much. Yeah, and I'm, I'm very Greek, much looking forward to yeah. normal life where we get to interact with people and shake hands and hug and, you know, slap each other that. on the back. And, Let's not yeah. go crazy. Waving your arms around. <laughs> We're like a great elevator. elevator. All right. So yeah, people need emotional connection and thank God for Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, notice I'm not saying Skype, the Microsoft variant, but yeah. thank God for Zoom because we are able to still maintain some degree of connection. Oh yeah, with I people. love it. I don't want to delete it from my computer or anything like that. Don't do it, buddy. But I still want to have real, real in-person interactions. No, I had horrendous stress yesterday, serious. Uh -oh. And I was actually Actually, uh -oh. like really angry. My wife is the only one in the room. Straight and nice, you can tell I'm in Yeah, but my wife was um, the only one in the room. So of course I, I aimed it all at her, and I had to immediately go and apologize. She yeah. just took it in stride, and I said, "Look, I'm just pissed off about something, and it's not you." And I really apologize. It was ridiculous. You know what it was? Because my bookkeeper is in our house today. The bookkeeper does her bookkeeping, which goes to our accountant, and Heather helps her with the bookkeeping. So the bookkeeper. Why is it always about money with you? Shut baby? up. <laughs> she could not. Do the bookkeeping last year. We had the system had crashed because, of course, yeah. it was a Windows-based machine. So I went out and bought a brand new Asus laptop, loaded it with our soft, our bookkeeping software, got Quicken on the phone and all this. Got it working. Yeah. But it hasn't been used since she did the bookkeeping last year. So I uh -oh. charged I charged uh -oh. that pecker uh -oh. up. Uh -oh. I charged that pecker up. Yeah, I bet you I did. I turned it on. And it's wanting code. How many things. updates did Bill Gates oh, want to no, send listen, to you? Oh. I, I intentionally had kept the Wi-Fi off. It was on airplane mode. I wouldn't let it get in and start trying to screw the system. Right. My stress was building, Chris. Yeah. And this is how this is relevant. As soon as I was getting into the machine and you log in and there's like 15 steps because it's designed by an Enneagram 5 who equates complexity with intelligence and it's getting more and more annoying. And then I could not get the thing working. And then Heather, of course, comes in and presses enter at the wrong time. And then it all goes south. And... I'm screaming at Bill Gates and I'm screaming at Microsoft. Well, not screaming, but, you know, uttering, uttering deep utterances. And eventually I got the thing working. And I said to Heather, notice how different it is with the Mac. I turn it on, it's on. Yeah. It's like, anyway, so I was under a great deal of stress. And I think that ties in with the whole COVID thing. Because when I said, do you think I'm under stress? And you said, yes. Mm -hmm. And I know I start compulsively doing my OCD, straightening things and stuff, which shows I am under stress. But because it was so near the surface... Just something as stupid as having to deal with a Windows machine, like boom, like I was I was not responding sanely at that moment, which is unusual for a man of such depth. So I, I'm just wondering where this when is going. You, when you bought this Acer <laughs> Windows powered computer, Asus, yeah. Asus whatever, where 
Were you not tempted to also pick up a rotary telephone, an eight track cassette player, <laughs> and perhaps a coal fired oven? Well, I realize this isn't for me. <laughs> this is this is for the bookkeeper only. It's just for her with our software because yes. all her stuff is on, on Windows, unfortunately. So you know me, Chris. So I, how I, did this all get resolved? It all got resolved when I just got the thing set. It's ready to go. And I shut the pecker down and she can deal with it today. And in fact, in fact, she's there by, right now doing it. Now, but I am tech boy. Let's not make anyone think I'm Windows boy because I am now the proud owner. Oh, That's you Apple oh. AirPod Max <laughs> headphones. Oh. I brought them over and he's freaking <sighs> drooling over these things. I've never beaten him to any tech thing uh, in my life. I am so impressed now. with these AirPods Max. They are a f insane amount of money, but unbelievably awesome. So for Zoom meetings, I, I know it's going to be wonderful. Now I'll always hear you loud and clear. And when you're shuffling a deck of cards when we're in the middle of a clubhouse session and I'm trying to get your attention on Zoom and tell you it's <laughs> a horrendous attention. noise. Yeah. You, I didn't, you shuffled that deck of cards that with those you. things on and I could not even hear a thing. I came up to one of the nine microphones and yeah. gave it the... It was unbelievable. So anyway, amazing. we're all under stress. I'm under, right. I was under, obviously, more stress than I realized. Um, we need also a connection to community. And yes. And fortunate. Can you imagine if Zoom did not permit us to talk to more than one person at once? Well, they, you know, the, the Tony Robbins six human needs model includes, of course, connection and things like that, right? So you've connection. got certainty, uncertainty, yep. significance, connection, and yeah. growth. These are all parts of the human needs. We need a connection to other people. We do. Yeah. So we need emotional connection, but we need connection to a community. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I missed from my jujitsu class. That was a freaking community. Yes. Bunch of guys with guys doing guys <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, we'll get back to it. We'll get back now, to look, it. Look, what about downtime and flow states? That's a human given's uh, um, need. One of the human givens. The idea that we all have this need to go into downtime. So, we, which of course is trance. We don't want to be hyped up all. When the time. you're very much aware of everything that's going on internally. Right, right. You're aware of your internal mm -hmm. states and your shifting thoughts and so on. And we need to be in flow states too. And we've all been in them. A flow state. It might be for someone that might be knitting, you know, or it might be playing shuffleboard or whatever it is. Yeah. It could be running. Running, I used to get in a flow state all the time when I was a, whoops, runner. Well, this stuff really comes out. <laughs> so the thing that's interesting about it is we need flow states. Are we missing them? Are, do you get into them when you do your workouts? Yeah, absolutely. I get into them when I'm doing my workouts. I get into them when I'm doing certain elements of work here in my yeah, office. I bet. I... If I and if I go for a bike ride or something like that, okay, that, I just got my bike out. That's in a sense though downtime as well because I'm very much in turn in tune with my own thoughts and I'm working out Selfish. by riding my bike, right? Yeah, 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 okay. So yeah, flow states where and and it can be even studying. If I'm reading a good book, I get into a flow state. That's really good for our brains. We have to find what puts us in those powerful mm -hmm. states and a sense of self significance, a sense of significance. And I was just saying, yeah, that's one of the major needs, right? So you have to have a sense of significance. If you don't feel significant, you're going to have a huge self-esteem problem. Yeah. You have to right? feel that like something you're doing mm -hmm. is working and is mattering. You to matter the to someone. Group, yeah. To someone. Chris, you matter, you matter to me. To your children. <laughs> That's why we have pets, <laughs> right? Children. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why we got children. Yeah, his dog Stinky Winky <laughs> under the table. I matter right to my now. children sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> now, it, it, the funny thing about Ollie, alias Stinky Winky, is he's a very gentle dog. A little, what kind of dog is he? Golden Doodle, mini he, Golden Doodle. But he stressed me out once because he loves being handled and picked up and all. If you make the mistake of even touching him with your foot, he treats it as an affront and attacks you like <laughs> a freaking pitbull. He sort of stopped doing that. He attacked yeah. me. He attacked me. I, my foot with a slipper on, barely high, Ollie. Just <laughs> arr, arr, arr. horrifying stuff. It's funny. He, he sounds like a real tiger in those situations and he shows his teeth, but he only just places them because yeah. he's saying, hey, I don't like that. Which is an yeah, indication which is, he's not a bull He's terrier. stressed out. By now, it. All right, let, let's, let's move get on. on to a sense of achievement and meaningful work. Mm, yeah. When you were old, Overloaded last week, and we've both gone through some overload lately. Yes. Uh, me far more than you, yeah. because I'm used to working about 20 minutes a week. <laughs> <laughs> you bought that by like threefold. So in your case, you told me that some of the threads, you you felt like the metaphor yeah. was all these loose threads. That's a really good, that's a really good point. I'll talk about that briefly. So I woke up one morning on. and I realized that <laughs> <laughs> I got out of bed, dragged a comb, a comb across my woke head. There we go. Turn to that blue say, Chris woke up in the morning. All right. So we'll do it this way, right? All right. So I woke up one morning and I felt kind of bothered and stressed out that I just had way too much work on my plate. 
And so I was tempted to go grab a piece of paper, Jump sit down. outside in the sun, and write down a big list of all the stuff that was in my brain. And it was also written on to-do lists and stuff. But what was floating around in my yeah. brain right at that moment, moment? And I filled an entire sheet of paper, paper. just with stuff that I then said to you are loose threads, things that haven't been finished, yeah. things that are maybe 80% done, and we decided to move on and do other things, and the list just kept getting now, bigger. Now, I'm finding it difficult mm -hmm. to be serious here, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet, um, yeah. For how long? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, that's true. And and you said you, you'd you redeveloped a sense of achievement that your work yeah. was meaningful again. You didn't have too okay. many irons in the fire. Yes, and, and I'm going to just go to the main point here that in prior times when I've noticed myself feeling any sense of overwhelm because of these loose threads and so much on the go, the temptation is to shut down. It's it's almost the f the flight response, right? Okay. Fight, flight, fight, flight, or freeze. It's let, let's just run away. In other words, I don't want to do anything for a week. I want to basically take a vacation and yeah. not do any work anything. at all. Okay. That isn't, of course, a very useful answer. So instead, I decided to reframe that feeling as a little alarm trigger, a little there alarm is. bell. Uh, not the really alarm bell, but the <laughs> bell at the Savoy Hotel. Yes. Right there. There that we go. That is Bryce Morgan. So he did dinner. Peter yeah. A little bing going, bing hey, brain. It's hey, it's time to rein things in. It's time to make that list and decide what are those items that need to be wrapped up? What are those top priority yeah, items? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in my mind, put an X, or even on paper, put an X beside all the things we're not going to do. Essentially put them on a do not do list. Right. And a give do myself- not do list. Do, like give that. myself permission to push those, dissociate from those tasks. Yeah. I'll bring them back in later. So we're focused on these three things that really need to get done. As soon as that decision was made, yeah. that a little alarm bell. Oh, that a, was a horrible. That was, say the, no, say the line again. Okay. As soon as that, that decision was made. That <laughs> little alarm bell better. went off and made it made me feel so much better. I immediately felt wonderful and motivated to get all this work done and move on to the next things. So it's nice. sort of like having, and I've done this in the past too, where I've had maybe three or four books on the go. And that's no, it's overwhelming. Terrible. It's terrible. Put the other three aside and look forward to reading them yeah. later. You, you need the closure. And, mm. and you know, you said about books. Books can stress me if I have a lot that are. I'm going to bring your Elon Musk, Musk book back because I've just read It's sitting there. It's sitting oh, there. you're not going to read it? Uh, it's a great book. But the thing is, I give books the 40-page rule. Yeah. Go savant. If yeah, it hasn't grabbed like me them. by 40 mm -hmm. pages in the dumper, well, not if it's someone else's book, but bring yeah. it back. Bring yeah. the pecker back. So let's go on from here. What are the effects of stress, Chris? Physiologically well, and psychologically as well. Okay, so obviously in your body, stress is going to create a higher level of cortisol uh -oh. than you want, right? Yeah. It's going to cause, in in some cases, it can cause an elevated heart rate. It can cause feelings of anxiety. It can cause hypertension, i.e. high blood pressure. What right. else are we thinking? It can well, cause, of course, it'll cause you to it'll cause you to behave in a way to get away from that stress which could be bad food habits bad bad habits of any kind uh -oh. nail biting yeah um, other stuff. Or worse. Other stuff. Nail biting or worse. worse. Yeah. Or worse, yeah. children. Don't try this at home. Now, interesting, because, um, you know, we talk, you mentioned the fight, flight, or freeze response, mm -hmm. which, of course, we're, we're under horrendous stress. Suddenly, you have a massive adrenaline dump, stress chemicals in the bloodstream to enable you to lift that car off your child or fight the saber-toothed tiger, whatever. Yeah. And that is, it has a, a negative effect on the human body, but... Stress is actually worse. The trickling adrenaline, trickling cortisol, dated. Oh yeah, I forgot about adrenaline. In of the course. system, it's the rust. And one of the bad effects is it can actually cause you to age prematurely if you subscribe to the. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, come on, what's the term I'm looking for? I'm having a freaking seniors moment here. The um, French letter. No, <laughs> no, the something uh, theory of aging. The. Um, yeah, no idea. No, you know, the ends of the genome and breaking down and Oh, oxidizing. telomeres. No, breaking down, oxidizing. The uh, free radical theory. Free of radical. Oh. Yeah. It causes too many free radicals in the, the okay. oxidation system of the body with the peroxide okay. causes all yes. stuff. Anyway, it's you bad can for tell you. It's we're bad not for you. we're not doctors. You yeah. can tell we're not stressed <laughs> at all. So you said hypertension. Uh, insomnia is another classic one. Oh, for because sure. If you're stressed, and one of the reasons is worry. So many people are uh, financially strapped. A buddy of mine the other day was telling me, Chris, this guy's in his late 50s like you. Mm -hmm. And he said that he is- um, Thanks, Mike. He's still 400K in debt. Oh, He owes $400,000 and he's like 58 years old. I'm thinking, buddy, like that's- 
Yeah, that stresses me out just thinking about it. I know, me too. Oh my goodness. So if you are under that kind of financial stress, then worrying kicks in and then your sleep gets Do you think you might lie in bed and ruminate over all these things that might happen? Could you clarify ruminate for our listeners and viewers, Chris? Think of it as running a tape loop. You're, you've got something on your mind and you keep just replaying it over and over and Close. worrying about it. Not quite there. Okay. Um, rumination well, that's comes my from definition. Ruminants, which are animals like cows, which have a Oh, series yes, of, stomachs, of course. So they, regurgitating they throw, and chewing that's stuff. That's the and same ruminating thing. Them. Yeah, but you're not vomiting up the words and the worries and everything <laughs> and chewing them physically. He's, he's talking about ruminating, though, like thinking about things endlessly. Yes. Okay. I was right. Bracket that yeah. with the bell. <laughs> because that whole section is bracketed by the bell. We'll edit it oh, out. Oh, that's it. Now, okay, no more, no more digestive for this. I complaints. Promise. What do people get upset stomachs? Stress mm. will upset the stomach. I remember when I was 15, Chris, uh, 63 years ago. No, Holy no, 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 53. Yeah. That's better. All of a sudden, I got 10 more years of life. I didn't even realize it. Me and Andy Rock and Brian McDowell put a pop bottle, actually Andy did it, on a train track, CP rail, to try to film with a Bell and Hell 8mm camera, a train crashing into it. He was going to film it at high speed and have a slow motion film of a train hitting a pop bottle. Back the in train the went by the other track. Oh. So he moved it. This happened several times. So then he built, <laughs> it amounted to a freaking wall. He put angle irons and foundation bricks on. He could have derailed the freaking train. Just then I see two men in raincoats coming over towards us, Mr. Faulkner and Mr. Barr, who were CP railway police. We were arrested. Um, me and Andy Rock, Andy Rock did the whole thing. I'm saying it was him, the guy with the Apollo 8 astronauts could see them in the turkey sandwich. He said something to the effect of, you know, he was just trying to film it. And they said, you could have derailed the train. We went to court, but I was 15. So was Andy. So we went to juvenile court. We had a lawyer, even though it's not, it's frowned upon there. And the judge threw it out. He said it was just a stupid thing. Brian was 16. He had to go to adult court. He oh. had less to do with it than either of us. His dad was an ex-cop. And they said, how would you like it if you derail that train and your parents were on it? Oh, my goodness. It was just inside the fence. $100 fine or 10 days in jail. I'm not kidding. That's literally what it was. I had to come home. So I buzzed the door in the apartment. My dad goes, hello. I said, hi, dad, let me in. So he's joking around. How do I know it's really you? I'm there with two cops. Oh. We get to the door and there's two men in trench coats. My dad, yes. You know, eyes open, smiling. And they hold the police badge. We need to talk to you about your son. My dad just went like this. His hand just went on his stomach. Oh, the stress instantly so went now to we're his getting stomach. Back he wound up developing ulcers, but not because of that. Stress will screw up your digestion. Wow, there it you will. go. And one of the ways is people overeat. Well, people say, I'm sick to my stomach, I know, right? I know. If you get really stressed out over something. Well, yeah, that's what the word disgust comes mm-hmm. from. Dis, as in disgorge. Gust, as in gustatory, gustatory. stomach. So oh. it's a, uh, oh. there's a degree of vomitus to it. <laughs> now listen, uh, another one with stress. Do you ever get this? Probably not because you're a pretty laid back guy. Jumpiness when you're stressed. I have been so stressed when I was doing a million hypnosis shows a week. I can say that without hyperbole at all. And huh, I'm somebody yawning, would come yeah. in a room and I just, I, I, I jump. I'd be mm. so freaking on edge. No, not jumpy. I don't get jumpiness. Listen, the dog is I trying to, more. the dog is trying to get, you want to come up? No? Here. Yeah. Okay. You're it's, making an appearance on the podcast. Don't put your foot near me. Turns into go. a pit bull. All right. So turns there's into a band Ollie. Dog. Ollie's going to join us for the podcast. Yes, here, he Philly. loves his Uncle Mike. He's a okay. good boy. So jumpiness, yeah. I know the one you get. You get the freaking irritability. You oh, become, absolutely. This, this easygoing Enneagram 9. I get the extremely nicest guy I know, irritable when I'm stressed out. He becomes a first-class professional bastard <laughs> irritable. Pissed off with me about everything. And, of course, it doesn't work because it just pushes me into further levity. And, <laughs> it and makes it worse. Because I'm at an age where I just don't care. <laughs> Nothing. What's going to make me stand in You've the corner? You've got it. Your He's superpower. CEO, but yeah, your superpower is not, not caring. caring. <laughs> yeah. I, I swear <laughs> to God that's true. I'm using um, it right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm All not right. even caring we, about not caring. Mike, here's what we have to do. We have to okay, now move on. on. I just lean forward in these jeans you've and I've got done a, myself a disservice. Gotta, you've <laughs> got to fix something. We've got to move on to the uh, interventions. How are we actually going to fix this? Isn't we, that brilliant? We I've need... done myself a disservice. <laughs> 25 minutes, Mike, oh, we've been man. talking about this stuff without actually giving any value no, have, how to, no, how to solve stress. Okay, so start, Chris. Treatments right. for stress. You go ahead. Okay, so the first everything. thing, we're going to talk, we're, we're going to break these right. generally down. First of all, I'm going to explain the two ways to think about it. There are physiological things that we can do, and there are, of course, emotional things that yes. we can do. Physiological things, 
count. Oh, we're going to talk about breathing, for example, as the next one. When and you say emotional, you mean mental things you can yeah, do. Okay. Emotional things that Clarifying. you can do in your mental, mental exercises, let's call them things yeah. that are geared to directly affect your emotion <laughs> or things that are geared to directly affect your body. Now, both are tied together in a loop. So if you affect your emotions, it's going to affect how your body behaves and vice versa. If you affect how your body behaves, you're going to change your emotions and you're finding something really <laughs> amusing. <laughs> I'm still laughing and I've done myself a disservice. Okay. Oh, can, baby, can it's we, so freaking funny. Can we, okay, yeah, yeah. So you said about the body. You can literally All right, do, so we're going to start with <sighs> breathing. So we often use something called 7-Eleven breathing. Mm. It doesn't need to be 7-Eleven because that sounds cool and is named after like the, 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 quick, the quickie mart from yeah, The yeah. Simpsons. Yeah. Um, yeah, the the dépanneur, as they call them in Quebec, dépanneur. right? 7-Eleven breathing, like simply time. think of it as inhale for less time than you exhale. So if you're going to inhale for five, let's say, or seven, whatever it is, exhale over longer, maybe twice that long. We say 7-Eleven, inhale over seven, exhale over 11. And the reason this is so useful is because, of course, Mike, you're Blood pressure will rise slightly and your pulse Heart rate will, will rise slightly rise when as you're, you're breathing inhaling in. as yep. you're active, activating your sympathetic nervous system. Yep. And then when you're exhaling, you're activating your parasympathetic nervous yes, system. Yes, the vagus nerve fires right. and switches, yes. So you're going to actually find it very relaxing. And mm. just by purposefully breathing different, 7-Eleven breathing. Differently. Differently, you will reduce your stress. Yes, and it really does work. And breathing shifts are foundational to yoga. Um, Qigong, martial arts, and they make a huge difference in your state. And we're back to the Grinder model. The bottom is performance. Above that is state. Above that is physiology. And, and above, above that, that is, is breathing. breathing. You change your breathing, you change your physiology. Your so state, if you affect your breathing, your performance yeah, in anything. absolutely. The and key is to slow down the mm -hmm. exhalation. Some people find it hard to exhale slowly. The key is purse your lips so that the air is coming out through a smaller aperture and it's Effortless. Don't tense your body. It should be effortless and easy. I'm doing it Relax right now. while you're doing this. Right. You can. We'll talk about combining these things in a moment. But oh, since we're we? gonna, since we're going to move on to exercise next, let's actually just talk about All it right. right now. So, for example. Walking is a nice exercise that you can do while you're doing 7-Eleven breathing. You probably won't 7-Eleven breathe while running or jogging. I would think not. You're breathing too heavy, but a nice, easy walk, you can totally do 7-Eleven breathing. And you can time breathing. it with your steps, yes, which makes it, it really, really it's easy. It's a really wonderful thing to do. Even if you're listening to some music, maybe you've got a good podcast on, Brain Software. There you go. And you can go out for a walk and you can do 7-Eleven breathing. But other forms of exercise, of course, will help you reduce your stress as well, right? Right. They certainly will. I mean, running from the police. <laughs> oh, no, hang on. That's probably not going to do it. Uh, oh, but yeah, oh, these are days of victory. Running from bylaw in case now, you want to have a barbecue exercise, in your backyard. Exercise, yeah. even not doing something like um, running. And I was a runner. I used to run six miles four times a week when I was young and loved it. I can't now. My knees just won't let me. And people, oh, have you got the right shoes? And if you, no, shut up. I've done all that. Been to the running room, shoes, orthotics, train. No, no, it doesn't work for me now. I'm at an age where my knees say, no, Mike, you can't do this. But there's other exercises I can do, like Hindu squats and that. Yeah, absolutely. I can crank up 200 of those packers. So what's going on in the body when I, or when you, exercise one, at a one. high degree yeah. of intensity? So say I do a really good set of, I like using my gymnastic rim, rings. <laughs> Rims, rings. We'll edit so, that out. <laughs> so if I do a set of dips on those to failure, a couple sets of those, man, my whole body just feels ready to go. Like I'm pumped. And do what? Just anything. Take on the world. Um, That's your superpower, what's going buddy. on? What's going on hormonally or whatever yeah. in the body? Well, of course, you're burning out the cortisol. Okay. So the cortisol is going to leave through the exercise. You're hyper-oxygenating your tissue as well, right. which is very, very good. And if you do it long enough, you're going to get an endorphin release. Okay. And as Richard Bandler brilliantly points out, you have a pharmacopoeia in your own brain, which is beyond anything you can get in a drugstore, where microdoses will have a powerful effect on the system. That's the word I was looking system. for, and the you know, endorphin Chris, release. I, I used to, um, when I would do a hypnosis show, if it was a difficult one, like I, I thought it was going to be a tough one, if I, when it was over, and I had maybe a three-hour drive home now, but that show was over, and I'm not dicking around, this is serious, serious, I'm doing the hand, I would get in the car, and I would feel this 
incredible high. Yeah. Because the oh, adrenaline absolutely. has switched off, and now there's the endorphin release that I made it through yet yeah. again. So there I'm, you go. I remember feeling that way after a lot of pain. I think I told you this once when I was about 17 and I was a lifeguard. Oh, don't go tell me that And we wanted story. to impress the, the female diver team. And so my friend yeah. Sean and I, we worked up the courage to do a one and a half somersault. So you're supposed to land into a dive off of the 10 meter tower, Mike. Hard to time from that height. Yeah, and I had never done it before, and I well, did it. And it wasn't <laughs> a one and a half. It was more like a one and freaking three quarters. So what part so of your anatomy did you land on? My back. Oh, I was wondering if you'd yeah. done yourself a disservice. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't do myself a disservice except for my... <laughs> <laughs> except to oh, my man. back but it, it hurt like a son of a gun gun yeah but after i got out of the water and recovered from the pain yeah, in, on, a, on a striker board i yeah. was on such a high that i'd done it and decided i would never do that yeah, again never again yeah i, I know if you want i could have seriously I, I injured myself you could. i watch these freaking idiots you know late night i'll put on youtube just to amuse myself and watch <laughs> these guys on freaking skateboards going off roofs of houses and stuff <laughs> and thinking they're going to land and the board's <laughs> gone five feet away and they just land like crumpled 40 feet down. It's insane. When they, when they slide down a banister uh, uh, or yeah. something and then you just sense crotch trauma. Well, a disservice, yeah. yeah. It's disservice. Like, I, I remember seeing Johnny Knoxville do that and he's like, I'm Johnny Knoxville. I think he's trying to go over I'm to gonna, you. Okay, come on over here. Here, here, buddy. buddy. Here you go. I'm Johnny Knoxville and I'm going to grind this rail. And yeah. he crashes on the stairs. He's just in it's, agony and everyone, no one's helping it's him. It's absolutely insane. Okay, All now, right. laughing on purpose. Oh no, tense and release. Talk okay, so we're, we're going to go through, oh, my iPad locked on me. So here we go. Ten, okay, tense and release yeah. is a really okay, wonderful. So now, for those, you're going to put him down? All right. For those obviously just listening in, you won't see us, so I'll make sure I do an adequate job of explaining this. But tense and release, the idea is yeah. if you only relax your muscles, you don't notice much of a difference, right? Oh, I'm sitting here. I'm mostly relaxed. If you say, okay, relax every muscle in your body. Just Everyone? When I snap my fingers, just completely relax every yeah. muscle. Okay. I don't really notice much difference because my legs were Neither already fairly relaxed, et cetera. But if I tense all these muscle groups on purpose, so let's say we make fists and we clench them, thumbs on the outside, people, right? Not holding we, the breath, though. You know, squeeze your leg muscles into the chair, dig your toes into the ground, push your tongue up against the roof of your mouth, clench, don't clench your jaw. Keep breathing your normally. Keep breathing normally. Tense your forehead muscles. And then suddenly, <laughs> just... Let everything go. <sighs> like, imagine that a, a a noodle, like a, a spaghetti, went from being raw, you know, in its very stiff form, to immediately being per the per perfectly cooked. potential for off-color mm -hmm. Oh, I know, I know. I gave that incredible. to you on purpose. But if you think about the rigidity, the stiffness, the, the tension, let's say, in a piece of spaghetti, and then you think about a piece of spaghetti that you pulled out of the boiling water after it's perfectly cooked, it's completely just soggy and limp and okay, loose and, and relaxed. Okay, family rated. There you go. Gonna, gonna, what about laughing on purpose? purpose oh, okay so first of all the tense and release yeah when can people do that Whenever obviously it's going to look a little weird if you do that in a business meeting. Yeah, but the 7-eleven right. and breathing or something like that can work wonderfully if you're in a meeting and you change the way you're breathing but the tense and release is something you can use anywhere before you yes, go into the, you meeting, go into the meeting right you don't want to be doing it at mm -hmm. the time but You'll the 7-eleven like breathing you can do in all the right meeting too, now the laughing on purpose is another one of those things where <laughs> Uh, depending on where you do it, you might look really weird as right. well. But in the privacy of your own home, yes, you have a right. Or to in, the weird as you of, want. Of, in the privacy of in the privacy of your own, own auto uh, noise canceling headphones. Oh, nice. That, then you can laugh on purpose. When here's the funny thing: what happens when you're in a really good mood and things are funny? You laugh. Yeah. Laughing is an indication that you're not under stress. You're feeling great. So, so if you do it on purpose, you reverse your, the loop. You what do is the your laughing. Brain, your brain, your gets brain a message. says, oh, he must be happy and yeah. feeling really good. And you get the same serotonin release or Absolutely. whatever it is. Yeah. And we did a podcast. I don't remember what episode. We'll look it up and we'll put it in the show notes. We did... Um, 
an interview with James Hazelrig probably a couple of years yes, back, we didn't did. we? We'll make sure we link to that in the show notes because laughing this yoga. idea of laughing on purpose, yeah. It's, it's really good for you. I watched laughing yoga video and a woman was leading this class and there's a bunch of people in it and they're all laughing that on purpose. And then she says, okay, who's new to the class? And this woman puts her hand up. She said, tell us about yourself. I said, well, my name is Doreen. Why are you here, Doreen? She said, well, I've been diagnosed with cervical cancer. And they all just burst out <laughs> laughing, laughing their heads off. And she does too. And it's, um, I think it was Norman Cousins who wrote Anatomy of an Illness mm -hmm. when he got rid of his own, you know, terminal cancer. That's by a just great watching way. comedians and laughing constantly and stoked his system with the right kind of chemicals. And great, I'm, great. We're not saying that you can cure cancer by laughing. What no, we would never is, say that. That's, laughing is good That would you. be inappropriate. But right. you can absolutely help yourself in many ways by making sure that you're not dealing with too much stress and laughing on purpose is a well, great way to do it. Well, this is just it. Now, Chris, we have to, let's talk about uh, limitations to the options reframe. And I want to talk about the Reuben Carter example. Hurricane right. Carter, who was a friend of mine, the boxer, uh, they did the movie The Hurricane with Denzel Washington playing him. He was put in solitary confinement. I think he was 14 years in prison for murders he did not commit and was exonerated. And I said to him, Ruben, you like your freedom. He's an Enneagram 8 or was like I am. We like our freedom. That's a huge thing, not being controlled. I said, what was it like being in solitary confinement? How did you deal with that? And he said, he reframed it and controlled his environment of mm -hmm. just that cell. He was 100% in control in that cell. I said, what if they'd put you in a smaller setting or tied you up or something? He said, I was willing to be in control of my own thoughts and inside my own skin. That makes he sense. just kept reining it in to where he was completely in control. Listen, guys, if you're limited in some way, Focus on what you are able to do. Focus on where your freedom is. Yeah. Focusing on your options rather than your restrictions. And in a similar vein, focusing on what you want rather than what you don't want. Yeah. Those are all. So now we've, as you can tell, we've shifted away from the physiological stuff to the emotional stuff, the mental game stuff. Here, yeah. Right. So we're starting with this idea. But it's interesting because if you do it the other way, you can really screw up your life pretty quick. I won a big award in 2000 and it was this Hall of Fame award, Jim Carrey. Harry had won it and um, a couple of bands and so on. Anyway, I was so excited about this and I was coming back from Ottawa where I'd been presented with this. I phoned my wife. I remember the album I was listening to, Pan Play Page and Plant at that moment, everything. So excited. And my wife's an Enneagram 6, so it's always doubt and looking for what's wrong. Oh, okay. So I said, honey, I won the big award. I won the Hall of Fame award. And she said to me, well, you probably weren't up against anyone of any significance. <laughs> I was <laughs> just deflated. Now, oh, now we laugh imagine, about it. Like, we laugh about it. But no, what no. a difference that made. It took something that made me feel great and reduced it and made it terrible. Actually, I was up against Imagine a kid people. comes home from school and says, I got Danny, Dad, I got 95 on my chemistry oh, exam. Oh, don't get too big you know, for your bridges. Can you imagine your parents saying to you, well, I guess the exam must have not been very difficult. Terrible. Like, terrible. what yeah, a way to deflate, deflate focus someone. Focus on and, what your options mm. are. Focus on what's good. Focus on what you're able to do. And on that note, we have a commercial break. Right. And then we'll come back. Tonight on the Matt Crunkhorn Network. Terence Phipps was a happy, if ordinary man, living a quiet life in Granby, Connecticut. Each morning, he'd eat a toasted bagel with a cup of imported English tea as he read the New Haven Journal. It was a restful life in his sentry home with the dried up cherry tree on the front lawn. And even his bookkeeping job at the local meat packing plant was easy to take and paid well. In the evenings, Terence would listen to terrifying radio shows about the Slender Man, Black Eyed Children, and the hospital where you died. It was a good life, in many ways a wonderful life. One day, however, everything went off the rails, and all because of a late night infomercial he'd seen on late night television. The ad was for a pressure cooker, something he'd always wanted to try. The idea of cooking pork chops and beans at high temperature and even higher pressure had always appealed to him, but he'd never acted on it before now. But this pressure cooker was very high-end, and since it was made by the Shizjig Corporation, it was guaranteed to be 100% ant-proof. Best of all, since the CEO of the company, Dave Shizjig, had recently acquired the CERN Large Hadron Collider, they could guarantee delivery in less than three nanoseconds anywhere in the world. 
Terrence called the infomercial number and paid the $429 on his credit card. Amazingly, as he hung up the phone, there was a knock at the front door. Terrence opened the door, expecting the horror of black-eyed children asking to come in to use the phone. But a smiling man with a brush-cut hair in a silver suit covered in the CERN and NASA logos handed him a heavy box. It was the Shizjig pressure cooker. Terrence didn't even say thank you, but rushed into his kitchen, opened the box, and plugged in the pressure cooker, which he began to fill with cold pork and white beans. Excited to try this remarkable culinary tool, Terrence Phipps didn't read the instructions, which warned about plugging the device into an ungrounded wall socket. The pressure cooker heated up in minutes and began to cook the meat and beans, but then exploded violently driving metal shards and medium-rare pork into his left testicle and voiding the three-year warranty. Gripping the mass of metal and pork that used to be his vast deference, Terence was going into shock as he struggled to call 911, but was under such stress that he couldn't recall the phone number. Terence struggled to crawl to the front door and forced it open, rapidly losing consciousness. But the last thing he saw brought a smile to his face. Amazingly, the formerly dead cherry tree on his lawn had burst into beautifully fragrant pink blossoms. Everything changes when the lawn tree blooms. I looked out of my room. He looked out of his room. And the lawn tree bloomed. Yes, the, the lawn, lawn tree bloomed. bloomed. And the lawn tree bloomed back to bloomed normal quite soon. In the middle of June. When, when the lawn tree blooms. The lawn tree blooms tonight on the Patricia Krenwinkel Network. Okay, and we are back. Mike, let's move on, and can you teach the literal reframe, a.k.a. the garbage can technique? Yeah, buddy, we, we, we'll just mention this well. Self-hypnosis, mm -hmm. learn to do self-hypnosis. You can get rid of stress super quickly with that and go in and out of it just like doing a power nap, but we just give that I a I think nod. we actually have a whole course called Easy Self-Hypnosis, wow. and it's included in our personal growth membership, which you can find on our website. Simply go to MikeMandelHypnosis.com forward slash product. Products. Nice one, Chris. Now, right. The literal reframe comes from NLP, and basically what you're doing is you're going to find out when you go to bed at night, mm -hmm. what was great about today? Think about it. Freeze frame the, the video you're seeing, and then <coughs> cough. Uh -huh. <laughs> that part's not in it. Freeze frame the video. Make it close, bright color, blow it up, bring it in, make it 3D, and leave it like that. Then think of what was crap about the day. That's a technical term. Run the video. Maybe you had an argument with someone. In the middle of it, freeze frame it. Dissociate from it so you see yourself in the picture having that argument, whatever it is. Shrink it down. Make it black and white and grainy. And stick it on an imaginary wall. Put a museum lamp over it and turn the light on. This throws a new light on the, the subject. And this will greatly reduce the stress you've gone through during the day. It will magnify what was great, the options about it. And the wonderful thing is if you do this every night... You'll start falling asleep as you're doing it. Your brain will get the picture, it'll get the idea, and it will start to automate and run on its it, own. If you think about it, it is uh, very similar to the two-screen technique that you yes. can think of in self-hypnosis, right? Christopher. Which we got out of Stanley Fisher's book. Um, can't, yeah, remember, book. can't remember the actual title. No, no, do I. Dr. Stanley Fisher wrote it many years ago. And the two-screen approach was simply to lie down, go into trance, and imagine, or sit, doesn't matter. You don't have to lie down to go into Stand. hypnosis. But if you're going to bed, then this is a wonderful way to do it right. and you're imagining two screens in front of you let's say the left screen represents the stuff that isn't that you want to leave in the past and dissociate from and the right hand screen that's the one where all the good stuff is so any memory that pops into your mind and so if you're doing this to go to sleep what memory from the day pops into your mind oh here's a good one great let's put that on the right hand screen because that's awesome i want to keep that i'm going to at the end of the session bring that in draw it in towards me but all the stuff that was crap i'm going to put that on the left screen and i'm going to let that float out into the vastness of the universe or something like that right <laughs> right right and if you're doing this while you're going to sleep you may never get to the point of exiting the trance where you might say okay i'm going to take everything on that left hand screen push it out let it burn up in the sun press it out and man. the right hand screen oh i'm going to bring that in i'm going to reach out with my physical hands and draw that in and imagine i'm just taking in all of the goodness from that mm -hmm. but if you're doing this like i said falling asleep 
simply keep doing the exercise, good on this side, bad on this side, whatever you want to call it, and you'll fall asleep naturally. Nice. That's while good. Doing this. That's very good. Very useful technique, similar to the literal reframe. And I want to leave with one final point. And this one, I want to give credit to our awesome friend and co-trainer, uh, Rick Green, Captain Rick Green, amazing hypnotist. He told me about this yesterday. Actually, it was in our um, Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy Engage group. And Rick said, an amazing recording to reduce anxiety and stress that has been scientifically designed for that purpose. They say you can tune your stress down by something like 35% by just listening to this. Oh, I want to learn and this. it is what called is it? Weightless. It's by Marconi Union. And the best thing is they've done like a 10-hour version of it as well. Is it on Apple Music? It is on Apple Music. Oh. And I have it in my own computer oh, for that I'm reason. putting that Weightless on Weightless by Marconi Union. It was designed to reduce stress. And there's even a video that you can watch, um, the official music video, which is kind of weird. It's like three UFOs flying around, which actually put me under greater stress with disclosure <laughs> coming and all that. But um, <laughs> anyway, the aliens are your friends, not. Um, weightless, Marconi Union. And why, why don't you right now, Chris, give us the empowering question. All right, here's your empowering question for episode 178. Ask yourself, how much stress am I under right now? And what will I do today and continue to do to eliminate its negative effect on my physical and mental health? Nice. That's right. And I've got so, a brief meta five for you, how we used to create stress for other people. Oh. <laughs> we used to go copping. It was me, Rick Young, Dave Dickey, and Steve War. I'm giving you the real names. Yeah. So we were kids. Um, I was 17. Steve was 16. I think Rick and Dave were about 17. They were pretty tall guys, especially Rick. What he did was Rick made a fake police uniform. He got a pale blue shirt, a button-down shirt, did it up to the top. He put on very dark blue jeans and got red plastic tape, put it down the seam oh, on okay. the pants. A heavy belt. He got an actual Toronto police cap. Oh, and wow. put an aluminum foil badge on the front. Put a pencil in his pocket and a, a pad. And we would go into a schoolyard and there'd be a bunch of guys there and they'd be doing things that kids do that they're not supposed to be doing at high school. And he would just come walking across the field, reaching for his pad. And to see everybody scatter in a thousand directions was hilarious. <laughs> but then we started carrying it further. We, they'd have a plain car, like an old Chevy, like a plain clothes cop car. Steve and I would be walking down the street. They'd call us over and in the middle of broad daylight would grab us, beat us up against the side of the car, <laughs> throw us in the back seat, go, shut the F up back there and roar away. In public. We could have gone to jail, impersonating police officers. But the best one was Rick never wanted to say he was a police officer. He just let it be implied. We were thrown in the back as though he'd arrested us. We were driving around Innisfood. And I still remember exactly where we were. And there's a kid about 14 walking along. Rick goes, come over here, son. Now, Rick's 17, right? Come over here, son. Kid comes over and he says, where are you going? He said, I'm just going home. Where were you? He said, I was at my friend's house. He takes out his pad. He says, I'm going to take your name down. Kid says, are you a cop? Now, Rick doesn't want to say, yes, I'm a police officer. He, he's being personal. So he just goes, mm-hmm. <laughs> and the kid says, can I see some ID? And he says, I haven't got time for this. And just burns out, throws away. <laughs> I realize now, it's so probably funny. a pretty stupid thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it was. Oh, wow. That's a wrap. That is a wrap. So thanks, everybody, for listening. 178 Brain Software. We will be back with more awesomeness every two weeks approximately. But while you're while you're here, if you're on the YouTube version, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so that you're always notified of our future videos. And if you're listening to the audio version, if you want the full show notes or if you want to watch the video version, you can go to MikeMandelHypnosis.com. You'll find a podcast link in the menu and you'll find the entire archive of course and all of the relevant notes is there anything we want to tell people about for oh well here i'll tell you what one thing that you might want to check out is we have a really awesome stress relief recording it's a hypnosis track and a teaching track that mike designed many years ago and it's still just as awesome as the day you recorded it and you'll find that on our website we'll put a link to it in the show notes so thanks, thanks again, again and good night that's our second.